This is a Moodle 3.7 installation, and this is a walkthrough of a couple of classes. Um, Moodle is um, an open source learning management ser system that is free. If you can install it on a set of servers somewhere, there's no restrictions. This particular installation is on a secure server using OpenSSL, so anyone using it is 100% secure, similar to a bank and what you're seeing here is the front part of the site and you can post videos you can post announcements but pretty much student data or any important data is uh, contained behind authentication so once you log in um, you will go to your dashboard and the courses that are available will show um, here we have the English RTI group um, and then we have the student technology leadership program then you have some other widgets like calendar and navigation. This is an admin view, so there's a lot more um, bells and whistles. It gives you a timeline of completed assignments, upcoming events, and who's online. So let's go into the English RTI group. And in here we have the course that I have set up and teach. And the way I approach, um, I guess, the class is it's a face-to-face -face class, but um, it's technology enhanced um, due to students struggling with reading and um, um, other academic areas. So the beginning block or section in the course here, these items here are available throughout the whole course. Um, you have the announcements that are always going to be recurring. Then you here in this course I have literary terms practice. These are 11th grade level and I encourage students to continually practice this quiz. They can take it as many times as they want because by taking the quiz, they're learning all, all the figurative language for um, up to, through 11th grade. And then there's a, there's a vote right now for posters in my classroom and students can click on this and go in and uh, quickly vote. We've had one vote, so this is the admin view. Um, we'll be doing that here probably next week when I get them into the computer lab. So if we pull out of that, we get to the main content. So each of these um, modules are short stories. They could they constitute basically a um, little bit more than a whole unit. The first story we have is The Pod by Maureen Crane. And we have a plot diagram worksheet for story elements that the students can work on. And this is all handed out in class and gone over face to face, but they have um, Moodle as a resource to get documents when they lose them, which they uh, tend to do via middle schoolers. Um, so then we have the actual story and I give the story with vocabulary um, and then when in class I put it on the overhead and we annotate and do close reading my version I put up on Moodle and then um, we have a quiz <clears throat> after we finish the unit and with every quiz because I have students of varying levels um, what I like to do is format the quiz in such a way that every quiz um, has audio which allows me to be in more places than one, one I can be in multiple places at the same time so if I have a group of students that need to take a quiz and they need that quiz read to them I can sequester them with a Chromebook or a Galaxy or some type of a device that has internet and they can go on and take the quiz and have it read to them by me so if you were to hit play what is the resolution in the story? They would hear a, the question read. Listening to B drone on about dolphins. B, when the dolphin begins to swim after making a noise. C. So that really helps the students, and the questions will automatically scramble. Um, each question can be set up to, um, to allow points for um, the not so correct answer or it can be just 100% one answer is correct so it's a it has adaptive learning built into it and I use that a lot with my students who are um, struggling readers because they may not get the exact question correct in multiple choice but the next one down may have been correct um, and then sometimes um, I'll insert questions that are multiple choice mul multiple select and they'll have to not only choose the correct answer, but they'll have to choose the textual evidence in the multiple choice answer that correlates or corroborates their answer. And that basically lets you create a multiple choice um, answer that supports um, citing evidence. Um, going back to the class, um, we got the next um, story that we were working on was The Ransom of Red Chief by O'Henry. And these handouts that I um, give the students 
I first start off with vocabulary, kind of a preview. Then we look at um, the story title. I have them predict the text. And then we start going through the author's background, the time period. And then we actually get into the reading of the story, which I do audio for. And we listen straight through once. Then students will receive a text that has been lowered by Lexile level if they're struggling readers. And they have to reread it and follow the, cr the close reading strategies. Students that are closer to grade level get the regular level reading that was read um, to them first with the uh, with the audio. So to take a look at that, um, I've got the Quizlet example. The kids can go in on their Chromebooks and they can review the vocabulary for a given um, unit. They can. I, I encourage them to do the flashcards because I'm old and old fashioned. And here we have the definitions, and you you can turn that around where we want to see the definition first and when they click Operation. it they can get this the vocabulary word read to them or they can see the definition and so they go through vocabulary or we do it together as a class and then after vocabulary we go through um, the actual reading with audio and this is the way I format the stories um, and I put these on TPT to you know get them out to the other teachers that might need them um, so this is level literacy they cover the story elements in this um, particular story and then we go through the close reading and annotation or marking the text and then they predict the story and that's a worksheet that prints out and then we have the author's background and they can go on these PDFs are interactive so they can go to biography.com and learn more um, there's lots of interactive elements within the PDF and then we cover time period and then last but not least we get to the um, the actual story in which I insert um, close reading um, cues for them the vocabulary or focus words or words that they may not know are interactive so they can find out what some of the um, old school languages for instance in this story um, there's also a link to the YouTube version of the audio, so if it's um, if they don't have access to um, uh, Adobe PDF, it will work. But if I download this PDF and um, open it up, it will um, allow me to play the audio with the fully featured um, Acrobat Reader. So when I get to the audio here, I simply click the sound button to activate it, and the uh, wait a second, here it is. It looked like a good thing, but wait till I tell you. So I encourage students to read along when they listen to audio, but I know students sometimes don't like to do that. So what I do in the story text is the audio is exactly matched to the text. I'll change a few random words, usually like 10 or so, and I offer um, academic tickets in my class. I call them BHAG tickets. And if they happen to spot these words, they can have a shot at um, earning a BHAG ticket. And that encourages them to actually reading along, which builds eye tracking and um, actually seeing words that they're not familiar with in both text and hearing it. So um, that's been real successful. And then after we go through the story um, with the audio one time, they read their own versions. So the leveled versions of these stories are um, also available on Moodle. I think uh, we'll jump down to the next one to kind of wrap this up. So all summer and a day, like right here you can see, is leveled. Um, and not in a folder like Redsheaf. So there's the Lexile level 710 and Lex Lexile, it's been lowered to 410 to 600. So if you take a look at this first, um, all summer and a day, it looks very similar um, in format. So they recognize what they have to do. And then when it gets to the story, just to kind of recap, it's same format. Um, we're focusing on story elements, background, the author and time period. And when they get to the story, this is the text that has is regular this is regular at grade level and you can see that this story has approximately oh the lines are not continuous in this one but there's more pages here because i go in and paraphrase and bring that text level down so um i think we end at page 12 there so if we go to the other version which is leveled the 410 we'll probably only have about 11 pages um, roughly so we get down here to yeah there's a lot less text in there and it's been leveled so that they can actually read through it on their own and implement some of the reading strategies look and look at cause and effect 
and not struggle with vocabulary development. Um, the next thing we'll be looking at um, moving to is Tom Sawyer, and not to make this too long, but uh, a quick preview. Um, I also use this, or I'm planning on using this for the Student Technology Leadership Program. I've created a course, and in that course, um, which is our project is Rails to the Table project, and it's hydroponics. So I first address what is hydroponics, what is nutrient film technique hydroponics. Then they have, um, I should actually look at a couple of these. I have a video for them to watch that explains the um, process of hydroponics. And looks like I got locked up here in the land of YouTube. Jump back into my course here. Um, but in the actual reading that they need to do, it gives them a brief overview, some statistics on hydroponic growth versus soil growth. So they, got, they have visuals and when they get to the next part about the type of hydroponics that they're going to be working with, um, there's still graphics, and then there's a bit more text in here for them to look at. Then they go into the video and get everything kind of recapped. And then this is not a finished course yet by far, um, so they'll be going on to propagation, system design, nutrients, seed to harvest, and marketing. And so when uh, we have um, STLP meetings, I'll be able to, um, for whatever topic we're on, I'll be able to stream that live to Moodle in a secured environment. So only students in STLP will be able to view the live stream and they can actually see what's going on face to face if they don't have transportation. Um, and I, I think that'll encourage um, student participation in the, in the, in the overall project. Um, I'll be streaming it live using um, what's called Big Blue Button. It's fully integrated with Moodle and it's a one-click deploy so I'll just let students know what time we will be having our meetings and um, they can log in and um, watch those live um, within the course. And then uh, there will be discussion boards so if they have questions you can ask them in real time or you can wait till afterwards and then recordings of those live um, streams will be up available for students and it'll also help document the process that we go through for the rails to table project um, so that's kind of an overview of how I'm teaching in the classroom and what how I'm using technology but make no mistake I'm not just solely relying on um, technology um, this is meant for stations when I have Chromebooks um, everything that's in this course um, for the English RTI is delivered face to face. The technology is just a backup um, for students to be able to have a, a, an easier way of getting to their documents. And I take them to the computer lab to do the um, quizzes or get Chromebooks, and they can actually listen to them with headphones. The the quizzes, um, so it's it's basically follows principles of universal design and is fully ADA compliant. So students that might be deaf or have other issues can get um, closed captioning even for a quiz if they need it well I guess they wouldn't need that because it's they can read it but if there's any type of videos that go along with the quiz they're closed captioned so so that's kind of an overview of what's going on in the classroom and what the system is I use I do use Google Classroom to some, some extent but its capabilities have not matured to the point of a fully um, you know uh, developed enterprise level learning management system which I've always had and um, so this makes it really nice to uh, to teach and that should conclude this tutorial